Today we're going to talk about how to tell apart uh, polar bonds from nonpolar bonds uh, and also from ionic bonds and also how to tell polar and nonpolar uh, molecules apart. So it's actually pretty simple and straightforward. So just a little bit first about polar and nonpolar compounds. It's fairly well known if you know what they are. Uh, polar and nonpolar compounds just don't like each other very much. In other words, there's this expression about oil and water don't mix, and that's what the expression is talking about. Polar and uh, nonpolar compounds uh, can't are not soluble in one another. Um, and the reason oil and water don't mix is because oil is nonpolar and water is polar. Well, after, after all the use of these terms, uh, it's important to know what polar and nonpolar mean. Polar basically means positive and negative charges on opposite ends. Uh, you have a positive charge on one end and a negative charge on the other. Uh, but one of the things we need to know is what causes this. And it has to do with electronegativity. We need to go back in time a little bit to before when we covered electronegativity. To talk about how all this happens. So electronegativity is an atom's ability to attract electrons when it's part of a chemical bond. There are various ways you can say this, but that's a pretty concise way. A more informal way that I usually use when introducing it to students sometimes is um, the degree to which an atom is an electron hog. That is, it's trying to pull electrons away uh, from other atoms. So a little bit hoggy uh, about it. And you can see on the diagram here, the oxygen atom in the water molecule is trying to pull electrons away from the hydrogen because it's more electronegative. All right, here we have a periodic table. This is a little bit of a recycling of an earlier uh, video I did where we were talking about the concept of electronegativity. We're mainly going to be just talking about the representative elements. Um, so we're going to get rid of the intertransition metals and we're going to get rid of the transition metals, kind of cram these together. Uh, and then I, I'm going to include the uh, noble gases because sometimes people not remember that noble gases aren't part of the electronegativity trend and when they see them on the periodic table they end up including them rather than leaving them out so i want people to be used to them being there anyway we're going to label uh the groups and then just a brief refresher on electronegativity trends um the trends in electronegativity are that they, it increases from left to right across a period going from left to right and also it increases from bottom to top within a group so um, it ends up pointing to a uh, fluorine it says the trends predict that fluorine, fluorine is the most electronegative element and it is all right so fluorine tends to be the uh, chief electron hog there so we can use these trends to make predictions about the polarity of bonds and the polarity of some molecules. All right, so more specifically, what does the word polar mean in chemistry? Obviously, it doesn't have as much to do in, with uh, some of the definitions in biology, but a brief chemistry definition would be the molecules having, having positive and negative ends or that they have opposite charges uh, on each end. So if you imagine a highly electronegative atom bound to a not very electronegative atom, you can imagine what might happen. So we've got a little periodic table up here. Remember the trends as we go from left to right, get more electronegative and bottom to top, get more electronegative. So we may as well use fluorine as our example of the highly electronegative atom. And way on the other side, we're going to use hydrogen as an example of a not very electronegative atom. So we will, we see a kind of a diagram of hydrogen fluoride, more commonly called hydrofluoric acid, but hydrogen fluoride where the fluorine is pulling the electrons over on its side and it's pulling them, pulling it away from the hydrogen. Um, and that's because the electronegativity of the fluorine is really, really high and of the hydrogen is not so much. So what happens is it forms a polar, what's called a polar covalent bond. Uh, which, as it says here, turns out to be polar because the electrons are shared unequally. That is, the fluorine gets the hog share of the electrons. So the more electronegative atom, since it has a, a stronger pull on these electrons, the electrons have negative charges, so the, that side develops a slight negative charge, and the less electronegative atom develops a slight positive charge. 
So you may notice here this lowercase Greek letter del, and there's a little negative sign here, lowercase Greek letter del, a little positive sign. Um, that refers to what's called partial charges. That means that, for example, the charge on the proton is plus one, the charge on the electron is minus one. Well, the charges here are less than that, but they're still, they still are positive and negative. And as long as we're talking about notation, uh, you also might see this little symbol with a, a arrow pointing toward the most electronegative atom. Right. Uh, what about nonpolar covalent bonds? What, what happens there? Well, it turns out just it's pretty much the opposite of everything that we just covered. Uh, both atoms in a nonpolar covalent bond have a similar electronegativity or even the same electronegativity as shown here in the chlorine molecule. Um, and the, so that, therefore, the electrons are distributed evenly and you don't have a positive or a negative charge. Um, so what we looked at a minute ago was being able to look at the periodic table and get an idea of what type of bond uh, atoms bonding with what atoms might cause a polar or nonpolar bond like extreme example of fluorine and hydrogen, fluorine being very electronegative and hydrogen not being very electronegative at all. That's to get a general idea, but to get a more specific idea, we actually do need the numbers, the electronegativity values. And here's a table that shows differing degrees of polarity, uh, going from very, very weak uh, to, to all the way past uh, covalent, all the way to the ionic, where the electrons are completely taken away. Uh, so one thing to note is that, a lot, like a lot of times in nature, there's not a sharp cutoff here. There's not a sharp cutoff between ionic and covalent bonds. Um, but charts like this can give you an idea as to what type of bond is going to happen, what uh, type of bond is going on. So um, it, instead, though, in practice, we often will just, uh, if we can identify a metal and a non-metal, that's usually a pretty good indication of an ionic bond. Uh, but again, if the electronegativity difference is more than about 2.0, the electrons are almost certainly going to be stripped off of one atom and then transferred to the other. All right, so um, one other thing of note is that if you have one or more polar bonds in a molecule, you can make the entire molecule polar. Uh, for example, water, we pointed that out earlier. Water is a polar molecule. Uh, another one is, this is ammonia. You can see uh, on the water and the ammonia both, you've got one highly electronegative atom. Uh, on, with the water, it's the oxygen, and with the ammonia, it's the nitrogen that's pulling the electrons away from the more non-electric uh, negative atoms. Uh, if you get a molecule like this, uh, where the entire molecule is polar, it's called a dipole, all right? But it's also important to note that just because a molecule has one or more polar bonds, it doesn't make it polar. You can see here uh, that you've got a, a more uh, electronegative oxygen on each end and a carbon in the middle but you don't have an electronegative uh, atom on one end and uh, not as electronegative on the other end. So therefore, the uh, electrons are distributed more evenly. Or the same with methane is shown here. So basically, you have to have positive and negative charges on opposite sides of the molecule. If it doesn't, the molecule is nonpolar. All right, to summarize, uh, polar in chemistry refers to bonds or molecules having negatively charged and positively charged ends. Polar bonds are polar due to one atom in that bond being much more electronegative than the other. Uh, the more electronegative atom pulls more electrons toward itself, making it develop a slight negative charge. And as a result, the less the ne electronegative atom de develops a slight positive charge. And uh, just by looking at the periodic table, you can get a good general idea of whether a bond is ionic or covalent. Uh, just by being able to estimate the difference in electronegativity. However, you can get a lot better, more accurate idea by using the actual electronegativity values and seeing how far apart they are. And that is it as far as the basics of polar and nonpolar compounds.